the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is the word that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Let us thank God that last night was not our last night. My name is Dr. Lenny Chavez, your Bible instructor for this evening. First and foremost, I give an honor to God, who is the order of my life. I give an honor to the head of this platform, Senior Pastor Dr. Thurman E. Evans, MD, PhD, First Lady Bonetta Evans, and Associate Pastor Irving Evans, an honor to whom all honor is due. Let us pray. Spirit of the living God, let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. And Lord, fill your servant's mouth with worthwhile stuff and nudge me when I've declared enough. In Jesus' name we pray, amen, amen, amen. I want to talk to you this evening about forgiveness and the opposite, which is unforgiveness. I want to address forgiving yourself, forgiving others, and forgiving God. We will be doing a pictorial, utilizing the image of the Black heart. The Black heart, AKA stony heart. In the red heart, AKA the heart of flesh. As we progress in the Bible study lesson, I will be using other pictorials as well. Now let us observe the hearts in the Hebrew culture. Having a heart of stone means that the core of one's being is lifeless. It kind of sounds like a oxymoron. How can something that pumps blood and sustain life be classified as lifeless? In the book of Ezekiel, God spoke twice about removing the people's stony heart so that they might have a heart of flesh. Ezekiel 11, 19 and 20, verse, NIV verse, re, uh, translation, I'm sorry, reads as thus. I will give them an undivided heart and put a new spirit in them. I remove from them their heart of stone and give them a heart of flesh. Then they will follow my decrees and be careful to keep my laws. They will be my people and I will be their God. He pretty much reiterates the same thing in Ezekiel 36, 26 through 27, NIV version reads as thus, I will give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I will remove from you your heart of stone and give you a heart of flesh and I will put my spirit in you and move you to follow my decrees and to be careful to keep my laws. I find this to be very, very important because God don't have to speak more than once, but he found it necessary to reiterate that he was our God, that he would be our God and that he wants us to have a heart of, of flesh. God does not want us to have a stony heart. A stony heart describes per, a person who has been disobedient and obstinate against God. The person, a stony heart is often punished. A person with the heart of flesh has a heart that is tender towards God and his ways, righteous living and other words he submits to God and obeys his will. If we do not have a heart of flesh, we need to pray so that God will create a new heart in us and renew the right spirit. 
We need to experience a raha of God breathing new life and creation of the heart of flesh. Without a heart of flesh, we cannot walk in the fullness of forgiveness. Be it forgiveness of yourself, others, not even of God. It's a heart of the matter. It is a keen act of obedience. It requires softening and conditioning of the heart, which cannot be achieved with a stony heart. A black heart often is associated with death, evil or being emotionally cold without compassion or love, which are the same things that unforgiveness holds. It's a dark attitude. When I use the term death, I'm speaking of a spiritual death. Forgiveness is not for the other person. It is for you. It is for me. When we don't, it's like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. Let's talk about forgiving oneself. When you hear the word forgive, probably you are the last person that you consider that you need to forgive. If this is not dealt with, it can give you low self-esteem or give you no self-esteem. A lot of us beat yourself up for many years because of the woulda, coulda, and the shoulda devil's imps. The demon of shame. Maybe you made a bad choice that seemed right at the time. Maybe you had an abortion. Maybe you hurt somebody by mistake or maybe on purpose. No matter what, God loves you and he will forgive you, probably already has. I have found out on numerous occasions that it was not the enemy, it was the inner me. The devil would haunt me with things of my past that I was not happy about. I learned that I was a new creation in Christ and that all things had passed away. Ah, oh, he walks with me. He talks with me. He tells me that I am his own. And he is not a specter of person. Even that the sun has set free is free indeed. Stop right now forgiving yourself. Let go and let God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Lay aside every weight that so easily beset you. Make a decision right now to be powerful and never again pitiful. You are more than a conqueror. Walk in your authority. Satan don't know nothing new. God said, behold, I will do a new thing. Do you not perceive it? Worrying about yesterday robs you of today and perhaps even tomorrow. Forgive yourself because God is not holding you hostage. You are free indeed. Now let's talk about forgiving others. Remember the same two types of hearts are to be considered. Whose report? Are you going to believe? Psalms chapter 1, verse 19 and 11, King James Version. The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. New American Standard Bible reads, Your words have I treasured in my heart that I may not sin against you. Normally, when someone hides, something they don't want it to be taken such things that they treasure even if not classified as a treasure even a dog will bury a bone so that it will not get taken because he values it notice that the scripture says that we might and may not sin against thee 
because perhaps because we all sin and fall short of the glory of God. But what I get from this passage of scripture is we stand a better chance of not sinning against him if the word is hidden in our hearts. Before our lips can emphatically declare the teaching of scripture, your heart must be the scripture's dwelling place. We cannot be just Bible toting, Bible scripture quoting, walking around with a mouth full of scriptures and a heart full of hate. The word of God is infused with the Holy Spirit. God breathed a sword unto itself. Hebrews 4, 12 through 13 amplified, for the word of God is living and active and full of power, making operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrated as far as the division of the soul and spirit. It completes of a personal and of the both joints and marrow, the deepest part of our nature, exposing and judging the very thoughts and intentions of the heart. And not a creature exists that is concealed from his sight, but all things are open and exposed and revealed to the eyes of him with whom we have to give account. Forgiving others. What if I was to tell you that when I was born decades ago, this doctor in Cape Fear Valley Hospital slapped me on my bottom and made me cry. I don't remember all the details, but I refused to forgive him. Think about that for a second. Why does that sound like sheer foolishness? And it does not sound like foolishness that you have not forgiven someone that offended you decades ago. A decade consists of 10 years. I decided it was over the top even for it to be one. We should forgive the person right then and there. Don't give nobody power over you. Can't even get your breakthrough because you have not forgiven. And nobody should have that type of power. When you do not forgive people, you are no longer a victim. You become one of Satan's volunteers. Proverbs 4, 14 through 16, enter not into the path of the wicked and go not the way of the evil man. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they have caused someone to fall. I don't call these people lucky, kind people. porcupine people. This is a porcupine. And I call PPP. A porcupine is an animal which is covered with thorns like spikes. They are called quail to protect them. So they often walk in defense just like some people walk in defense, some in offense and some roll with both. Some walk in defense because they have often been hurt. Some offense because hurting people have a tendency to hurt people. They transition into being porky pine people. They walk in envy jealousy because they don't know who they are least more than whose they are. I'm not making excuses for them. I'm just saying because a lot of times it's the why that makes you cry. Why did he do that? Why did she say that? 
Why did he take that? What in the world did that happen to me? Why not you? It's all in the plan. It got to happen. It has, excuse me, it has to happen that way. Porcupine people operate from a block heart. They say and do things to people knowing that it will offend or hurt them without caring one way or the other. Just doing wickedness on purpose. Sometimes they operate alone and sometimes they bring in other porcupine people. They have a tendency to operate in the same spirit of evilness, corruptness, wholeness, maliceness, a black heart, a heart of death. When I say death, I'm not speaking of a place of demise. I'm talking about spiritual death. It is very painful place when you are a prince uh, and of defense or offense. When people just keep can you and can you and can you. And yes, this makes forgiveness very hard for some people. It makes forgiveness seem almost impossible. You heard what I said. I said almost impossible. But remember, it is still very, very necessary. And with God, all things are possible. Proverbs 27 and 7 says, as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. For example, excuse me, Penina in the book of 1 Samuel, Penina was a lucky, kind person. She would constantly prick Hannah. Hannah name means favor. Penina's name means pearl. A pearl is derived from irritation and exasperation that forms inside the oyster's shell. Penina became the very thing that her name was derived from towards Hannah. She became agitation, aggravation, irritation, and humiliation. But in the end, God got the glory. But Nina really should have called Hannah up because now she really should have been congratulated. But Nina agitated her and irritated and humiliated her. Hannah did not become a pearl, but she became more precious and more valuable than a pearl could ever be because she obtained favor from God. Elkanah had two wives, Penina and Hannah, but he also had domestic misery. Penina was jealous of Hannah because she seemed to have been just a baby-making machine. Oh yeah, uh -huh, I said it, a baby-making machine. She had the lust and Hannah had the love. The Bible says in 1 Samuel 1 and 5 that Elkanah loved Hannah. When he would go up to shallow to worship, Elkanah would always give Hannah a double portion because he favored her. But see, Hannah had favor with God. And if you got favor with God, God would give you favor with man. Ever said to her in 1 Samuel 1 and 8, am I not than 10 sons. In other words, what I heard was, baby, you may not have 10 sons, but you got me. I loved her and Panina knew it. So because she was a hater, she tortured her because she could not have a child. Because God had shut Hannah's womb. This made the struggle real, finding her self-worth, even though she was not barren. To me, even though Panina was fertile and able to conceive child after child after child, she was the one that was barren, spiritually barren, unfruitful, unproductive. She had a barren heart. Emptiness, a barren mind, lacking inspiration, just fruitless. The Bible says in Matthew 7, 15 through 20, beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep clothing, but 
inwardly they are ravious wolves. You will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thrush, thr thorn bushes or figs from thistles? Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that goes does not bear good fruit is cut down, thrown into a fire. Therefore, by their fruits, you will know them. So to me, she was non-productive, a empty vessel, a porcupine person. The Bible said that Panina would torment her and humiliate her year after year after year. But Hannah refrained from becoming a porky pine person. Instead of seeking revenge, she sought after God. It shows nowhere in the Bible that she was running around telling others or seeking sympathy. Even though she was a victim, she never crossed over to becoming one of Satan's volunteers. To shatter Panana's spirit, because her behavior showed that it was truly already broken. Again, hurting people have a tendency to hurt people. Even though Hannah was deeply destroyed, she did not seek to destroy. She kept her heart pure and her hands clean. She even went up to Shiloh when they would go up for the worshiping experience, knowing that Piana, Panina would be there as she has been year after year to taunt her. The Bible says that often Hannah would weep. Often she would not eat, but she did not allow Panina to keep her from her worshiping experience. I say she was fasting and possibly did not even know it. However, only certain things come through prayer and fasting. There are people today that have become truck stars with no reward because they allow Pian Paninas, I'm sorry, that name kind of gets me sometimes, allow Paninas to stop their flow, to stop their worship experience. They won't go to church because a sister Panina is there. They leave the church for good because sister Panina is there or because brother PPP is there or they lose their worship experience because they have become one of them, a porky kind people. The story of Hannah is definitely a lesson of spiritual endurance. We must forgive and move forward. We cannot stop for every dog that barks on the sidewalk or every porcupine that pricks, but remain steadfast and unmovable. We must forgive in order to get our breakthrough. I believe that Hannah forgave Panina more than 70 times, seven times. Not forgiving is like drinking poison and waiting for the other person to die. People will burn you, but you must forgive. I've been burned by my stove before. Yes, it's an inanimate object, lifeless, and so are some people but I don't roll my eyes at my stove every time I use it. I just proceed with caution the way I handle it now. I still handle my business with my iron because I refuse to walk around wrinkled and I've been burned by my iron before because I don't like wrinkled clothes. I still proceed and use it but I proceed with caution. That's the way we have to deal with people. Even if we have to go where they go and be in their environment, we have to proceed with caution. I'm not telling you to, to, to that you gotta hang out with them because people you have history with really need to become history. That's another subject. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I still handle my business. I pray and I forgive people that have burned me. And I still govern myself accordingly because I refuse to be the church with spot or wrinkle. 
This is our position in Christ made possible by the cross. See Ephesians 5, 27 at your leisure. Meanwhile, back at the temple, as a matter of fact, this is the first time the tabernacle is referred to as the temple. It is called the temple or the house of the Lord. He even refers to our bodies as the temple, 1 Corinthians 6, 19 through 20. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have from God, and you are not your own? For you are bought with the price. Therefore glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. Now the Bible said Hannah was in bitterness of her soul, prayed unto the Lord and wept sorely. I see this as an effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous that availeth much. We know that her prayers was effectual because they were answered. Hannah went after her outcome. It was fervent. It was intense, passionate, and Holy Ghost filled. She asked, she seeked, and she knocked. And the door was eventually open. Not only did she come to get something, she came to give something. She promised to give her son Samuel back to God. Reciprocity is an expression of gratitude. In other words, she was thanking him in advance. She did not go to God with unforgiveness in her heart concerning Penina. God would not have blessed her, least more open her womb. We must forgive people. We cannot let nothing or no one block our blessing. The Bible says she continued praying before the Lord that the priest Eli marked her mouth. She spoke from her heart. Only her lips moved, but there was no sound. God tells us if we pray in secret, he will reward us openly. I believe that he was accustomed to people praying out loud, some to be heard for their many words as the hypocrites often do, but this was not that. Eli did not need to hear. She was not talking to him. She was talking to God. Her assignment was understood. Come to me all who are heavy laden and I will give you rest. I believe he would have discerned the Holy Spirit had he been in alignment with God. I believe he could have not, I'm sorry, I believe he could not have advised her in any shape, form, or fashion because he could not even run his own household. I'm just saying. That other lesson for another time. In other words, don't run to the phone, run to the throne. A lot of times we waste our time going and telling everybody. And most of the time, People don't care at all. And there's nothing they can do. You're wasting your time. You're wasting their time. But God is always right on time. Even though Eli was not where he should be, spiritually, God used him to give Hannah a great word of prophecy. That her prayers had been answered. She knew within herself that God heard her and her prayers would be answered. She went on her way. Her countenance was no longer sad. She had to have felt the lifting in the spirit. The Bible stated Elkanah knew his wife. Hannah and the Lord remembered her and she conceived Samuel and gave him back to the Lord as promised. Panina said that Hannah was cursed. She knew this was not true. If she didn't, she found out the truth. You cannot curse what God has already blessed. We can curse ourselves by not forgiving, but not being obedient. Remembering obedience is always better than sacrifice. Now I'm going to start with forgiving God. For example, in the book of Job 1 and 8, when God said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? Job was blessed and highly favored and paid in full. 
Satan told God that if you put forth your hand now and touch all that he has, he will curse you to your face. God knew the way that Job would take. I don't think his wife would have passed the test because as she looked at several trials and tribulations that Job experienced, she asked Job, why don't you cuss God and die? That didn't sound like a forgiving statement to me. That story I read about, this story I actually lived and witnessed. My husband, Mr. Chavez, I could call him the late Mr. Chavez, but he would probably cause an earthquake. I don't know why they use the term late, but I can't think of a time that Mr. Chavez was ever late, for that was against his religion. But I can't remember like it was yesterday. I introduced Mr. Chavez to Christ. He would pray with me, watch a word with me, go to church with me, praise God with me. He did his best to live godly as he had come to know how. But one day I had a miscarriage and lost our son. He was like Hannah. He was childish. Mr. Chavez became so mad with God that he did not want to pray anymore, watch a word anymore, go to church anymore, did not want to hear the name of God or Jesus. He was done. At least he thought he was. Months passed by and did not give up on God. Because 1 Corinthians 7, 14 through 18 says that our unbelieving husband is sanctified by the wife. So I just kept walking upright before God, for I know and understand he'll hold no good thing from those who walk upright before him. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. And God eventually blessed my husband and gave him a space for grace and mercy to come back home. But we know and understand that God is married to the backslide. Not only did my husband start back and he forgave God and started back praying, going to church, even join the men's choir. Not only did his tragedy bring him closer to God, but it brought him closer to me. Won't God do it? Because of who God is for these reasons and benefits, Ephesians 2 and 12, King James Version, that at the time you were without Christ, being aliens from the commonwealth of Israel and strangers from the covenants of promise, having no hope without God in the world. Grounds for forgiveness, for my own sake, namesake. To be without Christ is to be without God. God was in Christ, 2 Corinthians 5, 19. Three, without life, we're just existing. John 14, 6. Four, without light, because he is the light of the world. John 8 and 12. So if we walk in darkness, we have no salvation, which there is no other name. Without promise, all promises are in Christ. Without hope, simply hopeless. We need to be under the wings that protect us from danger, seen and unseen. His wings are power. They are almighty. His wings often embrace in compassion. Refusing the wings of his shelter is to perish. Knowledge comes from the mouth of God. Wisdom likewise. In all you're getting, get an understanding. Knowledge teaches us that a tomato is a fruit. Wisdom teaches us not to put it in a fruit salad. And understanding tells us reason being. Get God you get all three, lacking nothing. Please, if you have not forgiven God, 
Know that he is standing at the door and he knocks. Revelation 3.20, King James, New King James Version. Behold, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. These are two people, if you will, One is a porcupine person, as you can see, because it allowed people pricking them, pricking them, pricking them, and them not forgiving to become one of them. I thought about the thorns as being fiery dots. This one right here, person, if you will, as the fiery dots from the porcupine people try to penetrate them. They were walking upright before God. They refused not to let forgiveness run in their life. They fell off and they prayed and they trusted and then stayed quiet where God planted them down in their riches. They didn't allow people to run them off. And because they would not let the fiery dots, the porcupine pricks bother them, they remained smooth operators. Smooth operators. I don't know about you, but I'd rather be able to bless the fiery dots, and not become a divine person than to become one. The black heart. If you notice, it's empty. It's empty. It's empty. It's empty. And people walk around with black hearts, they're empty. They need a refilling because they are empty. God desires for us to have a heart of flesh. I'm gonna let you peek in it because he said to hide the word within our heart, inside God's heart, as I have hidden the word. Is the word of God. It is illuminating light, God's word. Also, you know, I, you know, I can be a little crazy. He uses the foolish things to confound the wise. A cell phone in here, just in case you didn't uh, recognize the tangible Bible, because you haven't picked it up and seen it in so long. You don't even bring it to church no more. I don't always bring mine, but we need to get back to touching God's word. I didn't want you to feel like I wasn't talking about you. You see, the app on this phone is illuminated as well. So I don't want you to feel because I'm talking about the old fashioned Bible that I wasn't talking to you. Amen. Ask God to create a new heart in you. Ask God to renew the right spirit in you. Ask God, even if you think you got it going on. 
And that's generally an indication you got it going wrong. We can never, never, never have this dying heart. Because the world renews itself there. Let us go. Spirit of the living God. Lord, we thank you for all things, all things, great and small. Lord, there's nothing that we can do without you. Lord, if anyone tonight do not know you by the pardon of their sins, Lord, I ask you, Lord Jesus, to prick their heart so that they will cry out, what must I do to be saved? I'm asking you, Lord, to prick their heart so they can start today forgiving themselves. Yesterday is gone. Yesterday is a day that you saw that you will never see again. Lord, we ask that you help sister porcupine person or brother porcupine person to allow you to move all the thorns like you eventually did Paul. But me and one twin time, Lord, let them know that your grace is sufficient for thee. The more they read your word, the more they want to let go of things that are not like you. The more they hide your word in their heart, the more they walk up right like you. Lord, help us in all our unbelief. If I have sinned and fall short of your glory, Lord, I'm asking that you create a new heart in me. You're not perfect. I just serve a perfect God. Lord, I thank you, Lord Jesus. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. Give us some of what Hannah had, Lord. When we will lay before you and we will pray before you and we will fast before you knowing that you are the answer. No matter who against us, but we wrestle not with flesh and blood. It doesn't matter. You got me. You got her. You got us. I know a lot of people say, as she's saying, God, I'm not worried about porcupine people. We have him and he got us. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I thank you, Lord. I don't know where I, it, it's, kind of foreign to me that I can't see you. But then again, it's kind of good because I don't have to be afraid of man's faces. But wherever you are, your mouth, bless the Lord. Bless the Lord. I have not seen the manifestation of something. Bless the Lord, for he is worthy to be praised. Bless the Lord in advance. Praise him if you believe you already got it. Let everything that has breath praise the Lord. Don't worry about who's sitting next to you. Don't worry about when you go to church, what people going to say when you open your mouth and praise him. They say it don't take all that. They don't know the cost of your alabaster box. It wasn't there when Jesus found you. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Yeah, 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 Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Bless your name, Lord. Master, can you use me? Thank you, Lord. All of these things that I've asked, all of these things that I pray. Not my will, Lord, but your will be done. 
in Jesus' holy matchless name. Amen, amen, amen. It is so, and so it is. Good night. I hope that you were blessed because God's word is already blessed. It's not about me. It's about G-O-D. Good night. Bye for now. God loves you and so do I.